All right. All right. Hello, everyone. It's Michelle Mahar here, and I'm here today with Shireen Arif. Thank you so much, Sharin, for giving me your time to talk um, about what we're going through right now and how to keep positive and getting creative with our businesses and, and how we can pivot in, in life and business as well. So thank you, Sharin. If you want to just let us know a bit about who you are and what you're all about. Uh, hi, Michelle. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me all, uh, on your uh, show. And uh, before I talk about myself, I'm extremely distracted by your jewelry. <laughs> you know, like yes. even when I'm yeah. everybody people, loves my background there. <laughs> yes, I, I, I'm, you know, every piece is different and unique. That's what I love. It's not, you know, the same kind and 10 pieces, like 10 pieces of the same kind. So that I love that, and uh, you know, and and uh, I was very attracted to them. You know, the little pieces that you brought with you at the at the retreat where we met, and thank you for driving me there. <laughs> I'm so glad um, that we had that retreat because that was basically yes. just before, like what two weeks before yes. um, everything shut down. So yes, that and that was a fabulous weekend we had. Yes. Yes, absolutely. And uh, so a little bit about me. I am a divorced single mother of four kids. I came uh, to Canada in 2005 from India. I was born and raised in India. And um, this was a totally different um, culture for me to embrace. Um, uh, and um, I have, uh, I, I was a qualified teacher. However, I didn't uh, teach, uh, like I didn't get a teacher's uh, paid job here in Canada. I did work for my ex-husband um, looking after his business. And um, after that, once I got divorced, uh, my life totally changed. I've been through a, a, a big roller coaster ride. I, you know, my marriage was very rough and um, uh, I've, you know, when I went through a lot of verbal emotional abuse and then eventually I had a paralysis, I had cancer, I survived all of that and I put all that behind me and then I've begun my life. In the last two years, I've written books, I have been sharing uh, the stage with people and sharing my story so that, uh, you know, others can, uh, you know, learn from what I've been through and not take on those lessons in their lives. I'm trying to save them from taking on those lessons in their lives because I lived those lessons and, you know, I want to uh, tell them that I lived them for you. So take the, take whatever teachings you get from my life story. And uh, so I've written books uh, and then I uh, am a coach, a resilience, um, uh, a resiliency coach. And I empower women uh, who are going through toxic relationships. Uh, I don't decide for them that what they have to do, but, but I, I am a stand for them so that they can reclaim their power and then decide which way they want to go. So that's right. who I am. Right, exactly. And um, yes, so uh, you ha also did compete in Speaker Slam as well. Yes. Or, um, I've, I've, but I uh, I've been on Speaker Slam stage four times. Four times. Okay. And yeah. I've missed, and I've missed, um, I've missed those as well. So, um, but uh, yeah, so you have shared your story with yes. uh, the world. <laughs> yes. And um, you have been through a lot for sure, um, as you shared it with me on the drive down to that, the retreat. So yes. um, essentially when all this happened, I found myself really getting sucked into the fear when everything mm -hmm. changed. I think it was all, the fact is that we had such a loss of control and everything was changing so quickly. And it was really all so new to us too. Like, like the whole idea of sports being canceled, like when the NBA canceled their season, I think that that was a real, um, that was a real trigger for me. Like it just, I couldn't believe that. Yeah. That this is really huge, you know, whatever's yeah. happening. Because back in February, I was at um, my suppliers because she deals with the factories over in China with the stainless steel components that I use. And 
so she had been in direct contact with them but i i really believed that it was just over there and it wasn't really going to come to us in in um in north america and then of course it did and so i just found myself the the whole social media was so negative everything like that so i decided to start doing these interviews to share the message um you know and and look for the deeper meaning as to what's happening because we were really given a gift to pause absolutely pause and reflect yes um would you not uh, agree and and what was your yes. your you know your so, um, so we had big plans. like that's it sorry <laughs> we had big plans so right uh, you know things shut down with march break right and we right. were flying out because my daughter my older daughter turned 25 uh, a few months before uh, oh, March, right. yes. and and uh, we had planned. Um, it was her first time going on a cruise with us. We had booked a cruise, and we were looking forward to that. I hadn't traveled with my kids last year. Normally, we do a little trip every year, but last year we didn't travel, so this year we were looking forward to it. Yeah. And we had yeah. plans, and then you know the whole family would be together, and then you know we were flying out from Toronto on the 14th of March to get to get to right. uh, Florida. And then 15th was our cruise that we had to board. And up until the 13th, you know, when all the buzz was on yes. about COVID-19, I was like, I am going, come hail, rain, storm, <laughs> yeah. or thunder. Like, I am going on this cruise. I am not listening. You know, nothing is going to happen. And it, I thought, right. okay, the media likes to blow up things out of proportion. And, you know, I'm, I'm not afraid. And, it, you know, it's not going to happen to me. I was like, or my kids. And, you know, I was so optimistic. I mean, the cruise was so tempting. I didn't want to think of anything negative. And then... And then the new, like I, but then there, there was a little fear, you know, because I'm going to travel alone with my kids. And then a friend called me and said, you know, I'm not deciding for you, but you're going to travel alone with your kids. And what if you are asked uh, to, you know, stay longer, like for two weeks on the cruise uh, or like, you know, not enter Canada and, and you know, to uh, self-isolate outside the country are you financially prepared for that? You know, like you can't come, like my daughter can't come back and join work right away. And there'll be losses, like financial losses and things like that. Right. And right. Uh, as much as I didn't like to hear it, but that was, that was a valid concern. And so I was like, that sucks, <laughs> you know? And then I, I mean, we were all disappointed, but then, you know, I had to be rational and responsible as a mother. And I said, all right, kids, you know, we have to, you know, postpone the trip. I feel we should do that. And I'm, I'm, I'm thankfully, like, I think I, I, did a, I did a good choice by doing that. And oh, then, for sure. But then I lost like all, oh. I lost the money on the plane tickets, uh, uh, you know, the flights. I didn't get a refund. Not even a credit for nothing, nothing. So I lost that money that, that was nearly $3,000 because we are five of us, so nearly $3,000. And then I lost, uh, um, and then I got a credit note from the, from the cruise, but uh, that, that was that. And, and the kids were obviously disappointed. And then I didn't anticipate that this would stretch. The March break would be like what seems like forever <laughs> now. And it's spilling into the summer. And then, you know, once it's summer, then it spills into September. The, you know, it's going to be close to the fall. So, yeah, it's, you know, it's pretty I, much it, most of the year is gone. So, um, yes, I, and as much as I'm, I am enjoying the slowing down and the time with my family, but as a single mom, I am also overwhelmed to be with my kids 24 seven, you know, I mean, right. my kids exactly to, without a, without a break. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. My, kids, my kids would go to school and my daughter would go to work. So I needed that alone time. Like it's, it's, you know, I could do things faster and like wrap up my chores and, you know, maybe sit for some time and do my own thing or maybe do nothing. I yeah, exactly. That. We we all need uh, we need yeah. that alone time, and especially yeah. when you have, um, uh, you know, you have the kids at home, and yeah. there's nowhere to go and nowhere to yeah. escape. Uh, yeah. 
it's um, it can be overwhelming, yeah. you know, and it, and it, and it is, you know, yes, and then no play dates, so they they also tend to get a right. little bit restless, you know, exactly. No play dates. Like, how long can they be on the t on the internet or on TV and or playing computer games? You know, how long can they do that? And so, and everything is closed. Where do I take them? So that was really hard. That was that was that phase when you know you couldn't go to parks and parks were closed and yes. people were being fined and all of that was really hard. I know it was to make sure that we are responsible and we make sure we are safe and everyone around us is safe and we were cooperating. We didn't go anywhere, but then it wasn't easy. So that was a very difficult phase. It's getting better, but it was right. a very right. difficult phase. So exactly right. And, and going back to your cruise, when you were going to go on the cruise, the thing is think um, there were so many cruise ships that were being affected. And um, I even heard the stories of, you know, they were, wouldn't be allowed to dock and they were floating yeah. out at sea. Yeah. So that, that's what scared me. Yeah. You don't want that happening. Right. Yes. That's yes. uh um, yes. that's definitely not uh, anything you'd want to happen. And then when initially school were, schools were closed um, before March break, they said the extra two weeks, so till April yes. 6th. And we kind of thought, okay. And then they closed the hair salons and nail salons. And we thought, okay, yes. they're, they're closed yes. for two weeks too. And everything's going to open on April 6th. Yes. And then of course it got extended and got extended. And yes. now look at us, we're still waiting for the hair salons and nail salons to open um, in yes. Toronto. So yeah. it's, it's just, uh, and, and of course then school, you know, school is, is, is not going to go, go back at all. And then yes. who knows even in September, because it's, it's hard to say that uh, yeah. how they can, you know, how, how they can distance. Um, yes, I know I, for my, I am worried. yes. Yeah. My daughter's school, high school is, is overcrowded. I mean, all the, in Etobicoke, all the high schools are overcrowded. All the schools are overcrowded. So yes. how all of a sudden can you have enough distance when, when there's not even enough room for the kids in the school? Yes, I am worried about that because I don't know if, you know, in September, everything is yeah. going to be safe. I mean, how do you, how do you control a virus? So it's in, yeah, and, and there's still so many unknowns about it, even yeah. with, um, you know, yeah. even with the and, and conflicting reports and everything like yeah. that. So yeah. it, it's just now it's now we've kind of got into this routine. But I feel like, like you say, there's no break because everybody's yeah. at home and everybody, yeah. everybody needs their little break. Like yeah. you need your yeah. time, your alone time Absolutely. and things like that. Absolutely. Absolutely. And then, um, you know, the uh, what I'm present to, it's not just slowing down and reflecting. What I'm present to is that we are in a, in a time capsule that's between the unprecedented, like something that we've never experienced before, and the unpredictable. So if right. we're in the middle of that, which means we are compelled to be in the present. Right. Because we, we, don't, we have no history and we have no future. So we are compelled to be in the present and we are not used to that because as human beings, we love to be in control. We love to have familiarity because, you know, uh, having a reference point in history gives us uh, some kind of, you know, we feel like we know what to do because there is a point of reference that, okay, at such time, people did this. So, you know, we could, uh, we could, uh, you know, improve that and come up with something new and something better. There is no point of reference, you know, where we right. can like, you know, go back and say, okay, what did this look like earlier? So this is, you know, literally living in the unknown. Yeah. And, and like you say, there's, um, it is, is, is causing us to just be present and think of now because we don't know anything about the future. And but prior to this, all you would do, it would always be running around thinking of the next thing you had to do and the next place you had to be. Yes. And yes. it was always um, in that manner, whatever was coming up next and next. And, yes. and now yes. that you don't know what the next is. So Absolutely. you have to yes. just, you just have to, um, you know, take it day by day, really, and, yes. and be, yes. 
be in the present. It, and it's funny because I'm, I'm just reading the Power of Now um, Eckhart Tolle book yes. just, uh, just now. And it's, um, we don't, we've never, nobody, nobody is ever present. You're always, your mind would always be thinking of the next thing. Yes, absolutely. And, and you know, this is, this is compelling us to, it's kind of a training that we are going through to learn to be in the present and it's not easy. So that, that makes it difficult. And, um, and well, of course, the, uh, the financial aspect. So my uh, main uh, source of uh, income is uh, rent. And um, my tenants are, um, they have a small business. They're two oh. very lovely girls. They've been my tenants for 10 years. And, you know, we've never had problems with each other. And, um, and uh, you know, they were on the verge of uh, closing business because how do they pay their bills if they're not going to make any money? And, and, and they had to close their doors. Um, so yes, they ha they had to. They they have yeah. a boutique. Uh, you know, it's um, women's uh, clothes uh, clothing boutique. Oh right, I remember seeing that. Yes. yes. So you know, it was very hard on them, and so I offered them, uh, you know, a rental discount so that they were not forced to shut down business, and they were very grateful about that. And you know, we're we're learning. Uh, it, it kind of made us, uh, you know look out for each other and, and make things work. Like I sacrifice a little and they sacrifice a little and, and, you know, make things work. And so all a lot for, of, yeah, all for the good of collaboration of, of and everybody, C community. Yes. It's, it's, yeah, yes. exactly. So I feel like the, you know, uh, the idea of community is, is becoming very uh, big, you know, our, our people are more present to, uh, you know, the collective, uh, being a part of the collective and what they could do, what right. each one of us can do. Uh, so I feel like that is a good thing. I'm, I'm also present to, you know, before when 2020 started and we talk about, you know, when we go for our eye tests and, you know, you get a 2020, that means you have clear vision and you're able to see things well. And so a lot of people like on social media, like it's a horrible year. It's a horrible year. Actually, it is not a horrible year. I mean, if we look at, what this pandemic has done it may, it has it has just there is clear vision we are clearly the truth is on our face we can't be oblivious to it we right. cannot deny what's what's working is showing up and what's not working is very clear it's very clear so the old system of hustle 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 is not working uh, and and we look at it the you know the, the they, they talk about 300% rise in domestic violence in Vancouver. And, and people are talking about, you know, how this pandemic is, you know, is, is so um, scary for women who are being abused in their homes and they are more in danger of being killed at home by, by their uh, intimate partner than by a stranger outside on the streets. So, right. you know, you, you can't ignore that anymore. It's in, in our faces. It is real. It, right. You know, do something about it. That's what 2020 has been about. Then, they, then we talk about, uh, you know, the Black Lives Matter and all of the George Floyd uh, episode. Yes. And, uh, you know, these have been, you know, kind of hidden under the rug and people talk about it, but then, and, and just talk about it. You know, and, and, and talk about it, it and then it goes away and yes. then until yes. something else happens and yeah, something drastic yeah. happens. But now it's becoming big and, and, you know, it's like a movement and people are more aware of it. But I think if people were busy and doing their jobs and working and, and hustling, I don't think they would have time to sit and think about it and give it so much time. Not in the same manner. Exactly. Exactly. That's, that's what has really, yes. And even the earth as well. Um, yes. You know, yes. giving the, t the earth the time to heal yes. because yes. we couldn't continue to um, yes. take, you know, uh, the fact is that we are one with the earth and, and it's Absolutely. not, you know, we don't own the earth, even though we, Absolutely. as the human race, we would think that we did. Yes. And, um, uh, you know, we're, well, there, you know, for people who believe this, that, you know, the earth is shifting from 3D to 5D yes. and, you know, yeah. going through the photon belt and like, you know, the truth will be revealed and all of that. Uh, you know, for those who don't believe it, they don't believe it. For those who believe it, I mean, everything, everybody's right. There's no right or wrong. Like, 
each right. one to their own. But, um, you know, it is a very powerful time for, uh, you know, spiritual awareness and, our, and, and, and being mindful about our connection with the earth. Um, you know, I, at the very least, I'm very, you know, if I didn't know any of this, if I didn't know about 3D and 5D and, and earth and, and, and spirituality, I am very present to the fact I live so close to the lake. I live so close to High Park. I can only look at, for a period of time, I could only look at the sun and the sky and, and all of that that was so freely available to me and I took it for granted and I didn't go take my walk and now I'm not allowed to take my walk. So that's when, you know, you learn to value and, and treasure the things that you take for granted. So, you know, yes. then I realized, yeah. oh, you know, what was I doing? I was so busy in my life and I put it away for another day to take a walk by the lake and now I really badly miss that. So, you know, our connection with the earth that we take for granted that, okay, I'd rather watch a show on Netflix. Maybe tomorrow I'll go take a walk. I'm so present to how important that is. I mean, now keep yes. watching Netflix day and night. <laughs> Nobody's <laughs> stopping you. That's when you realize that, you know, that's not enough. You need your connection to go out in nature and it, it is therapeutic. Yes, yes, it is for sure. Yeah, nature rejuvenates you as well. Yes, yes. And yes. Um, there's going to be so many things that we have uh, yes. taken for granted. Um, yes. You know, that just just uh, being able, especially with us not being able to get together with people in person. Absolutely. Right? You know, putting off wanting to go and see a friend or a oh, yes. for the longest time and now you, you know, you're suddenly present to like so many people passing away. Like I've, I've, I've heard of so many deaths in the last couple of months and it's not always been COVID-19. You know, I feel like there have been more deaths, you know, this year, like in the community of my, I don't know about you, but my friends, yeah. uh, I've been hearing of a lot of deaths and I'm so present to, oh, you know, like I, 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 I feel like I should have met my relatives because you don't know who's who's next right exactly <laughs> exactly so, and, and and everybody was guilty of that same thing yes. oh you know I should uh, I should phone whoever or I should see yes. whoever I myself I was I was supposed to um I'd been trying to have a coffee date with somebody uh yes. through Fem City for it had been months that we said, oh, yes. and we kept saying, oh, we'll do it later. We'll yes. do it later. And then we, of course, you know, then it got to this point. And then we actually had a, a coffee date over Zoom when this, yes. ha when this yes. happened. We said, well, that's it. We're going to do this. But yes. uh, again, it's, it's, uh, yes, so many uh, things. I, I, yes. And I've noticed that, you know, the things that we've been putting on hold are the ones that we're actually uh, uh, fulfilling on. Uh, during these times, um, we were present to that. So, you know, I I was uh, right. I was uh, uh, creating a program to um, serve women. You know, an online platform. Like I've been coaching people one on one, but to create an online platform has been my vision for the past two years. And what I accomplished in the last three months is so much more than what I did in the past two years. You know, like that, uh, those things were taking, it was, were speeding up now. I mean, things that I said I would do that I didn't do for so long. I had the time to do that. So I've been, you know, even though I didn't yeah. pressure myself, like there were uh, people who I saw a lot of people doing a lot of learning a new skill, doing a lot of uh, yes. uh, things. I didn't really do that. And I, I have been, even then, like I haven't rushed into things um i there have been days when i feel down you know because yep. this is not my normal and and i just do nothing and and i'm okay with that i don't feel guilty about it i i'm just okay with doing nothing because this is not easy this, this right whole and thing. and that's that's an important thing as well the yes. you the emotions it's it's kind of been like a roller coaster Yes. Uh, yes. of emotions and when you feel that way when you feel down you have to you you can't suppress those emotions you have to feel them yes. and let them um let them go through you yes. and uh and not judge yourself yes 
and um, uh, what I, so there was there's been a lot of good things that have happened too. So uh, you know I have I've always been on uh, uh, you know like a, a chat event or you know like how we are talking. I've always been in an interview kind of a setup where you know either we are live or or there's a recorded version, and I'm very comfortable with having a conversation with someone. So that comes naturally for me. But for me to go live on Facebook and have people look at me, you know, and I, if I make a mistake, I make a mistake. That used to be so confronting for me. So I broke through that fear and I created a challenge. Uh, and, and, I, and, and it was on my Facebook page and, and the challenge was reclaim your power in 10 days without having to leave home. And each day I committed to going live at a certain time in the day. And, you know, I, I shared a story of my life and how there was a breakdown and how I reclaimed my power and what did I do to reclaim my power. For example, you know, if I felt down and I felt nothing was working in my life, what I, I, how I flipped it was by counting my blessings and focusing on what was working in my life. So, you know, each day I, I shared a tool uh, that people could, uh, you know, an exercise or, or, or something that they could practice. And then I challenged them to take it through, you know, take that, that tip in their life and, and, and play with it and see where it takes them. So that was a very interesting uh, experience for me. Uh, in the you know day one was very confronting and I and you know I didn't know how to handle the tech bit and I was like I don't know which buttons to press and I'm on Facebook live but then I was honest and I shared that with them that I'm doing this for the very first time and then by the time it was the 10th day I was having a ball with it you know I loved it I loved I loved the connection so you know even if people are saying that it's uh, social distancing but for some people, it's physical distancing, but not social distancing. I think exactly. we are far more aware of our connections than we've ever been. Yes, that's an important point as well, because yes. I know for myself, um, yes. well, I stepped into doing these interviews. Yes. Uh, again, I didn't want to do, I had said I was going to do videos. I was going to do videos. And of course, I hadn't done it. I, yes. I you know. Yeah, again, the same thing as you, just didn't want to be out there. Yeah. And uh, I just started doing them, and, and now I love it. And yeah. I've done, um, you'll be like my 68th interview. And, wow. and um, it's great. And the thing is, too, that uh, you just, it, this whole period of time has caused so many people have yes. gone, gone so far out of their comfort zone. I've had some people on here and inter, um, interviewed some people who were very wary. They didn't want to get on here. They've never done this before. And, and it was great. It was great. So this is, I think, just the whole time has, has made people step into action. That's what yes. it seems like. Absolutely. And, and then you find out it's really not that scary thing that you thought it was. Yes. Yes. And yeah. I, I yeah. watched some of uh, the people who've come on your, uh, on your uh, show. And, uh, and, you know, it's interesting because if, if we didn't, let's say if we didn't have this, uh, we'd all be in isolation thinking that I'm, I'm dealing with this. And, and, you know, this is something that I am dealing with. But when someone right. comes uh, on your show and says, hey, you know, this is what I am dealing with. And it, it, you know, I could appear to be this very strong person and, you know, I, I got this. But then when I share how I have my breakdowns and I have my days when I really don't want to get out of my bed and I want to just be doing nothing because, you know, I feel like this is too much for me to handle and I don't know when this is going to end and when are we going back to our routines, well, you know, and that overwhelms me. So someone else listening to it can feel you know, comfortable and be able to accept what they are going through as, you know, as it's, it's, it's being human right. and, and, you know, it's okay to be that way or to feel that way and, you know, and learn from each other. And, and, you know, we're holding space for each other and that's a very exactly. beautiful thing. Exactly. And, and, you know, just to, to, so that you know that you're not the only one. Yeah. Everybody's going through the same thing. 
Um, it's not easy. This is not easy for anybody to go through this period of time. It, there's so many emotions involved yeah. and you have to, you know, you have to give yourself I mean, grace. Yes. And there's a funny, a funny story too. Like I, I have a salon right next door. I mean, just beside my home and then it's so easy. Like I just call them and whenever they're free and they just squeeze me in, I just have to walk down. I mean, I could even go there in my PJs and, and get my pedicure done and it's that close. So, and far. so, yeah. so I'm so spoiled <laughs> by that. I couldn't help it. Like for three months of not having my eyebrow threaded, I actually messaged her and I'm like, can you just come home and do it for me? <laughs> I can't handle it anymore. Like we've been so used to a, the way, a certain way of looking. <laughs> oh, exactly, exactly. It, um, yeah, I had to, um, I had to message my um, awesome. salon owner and and just do my roots. She she mixed me up uh, my base color, and I can't get the other like four. You know, I usually have four yeah. colors. I wasn't gonna start fiddling with that, but at least I got it so that I get rid of my gray. <laughs> oh, and she said no to me. She said no, and she said no. I'm really sorry. My husband will not allow it. And I was like, okay. And then I yeah, no, she can be fined and everything. So. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, it's but um, it's it's been quite difficult for some of those people like that. The salon owners who yeah. have the brick and mortar stores that had to shut yeah. down, and and they really they can't do any work remotely. Um, yeah. You know, other other places could at least do curbside pickup or some other yes. uh, some other yes. thing. Um, but uh, for work that like that, where yes. you know they're working on you, all they can yes. do is is just to make sure that they stay present in social media, um, yes. educate, do videos. Yes. You know, contact their clients, make sure everybody's okay, just serve. I mean, this whole period yeah. was a time to serve as well. The yeah. time when you're shut down, it's, you know, to serve others. And I did see that happening a lot as well as community yeah. coming together and people yeah. wanting to help each other. Yeah. And like I say, my, my salon owner, she mixed up the dye and dropped it in my house. And I, I just paid her, you know, paid her for the dye and did whatever I could yeah. for myself. Yeah. Um, the uh harder for the nail salons to do that absolutely <laughs> for you to try to do yeah, yourself yeah. but but um yeah. I, and i even saw some some of the hair salon owners would do a virtual like a zoom where you might be cutting somebody's hair in your household yeah. and they would just kind of guide you through it yes um, that was another thing that they could do um yeah. another salon uh, not a salon sorry a clothing store uh, one of the boutique owners that I know, she she has taken this time to create an online store yes. where she always yes. wanted to have the online store, but just said, oh, no, I don't have time to do it. Don't have time and kept pushing it off. And of course, this time has given her the chance to do so. And I think a lot of people have done that. And and then when they do reopen their stores, they'll have the online presence in, in addition to the in-person mm, experience. True. Same true. with live events as well. Yeah. Um, cause all yeah. the live events I was, um, uh, I had vendor tables for in March, April, and May were postponed. And now a um, couple of them are, they've been postponed to the fall, but one of them for sure has said they're just, they're doing an online event now, yes. um, which you well, can capture a bigger, them. you can capture a bigger audience because you don't have yeah. to worry about the. A distance, right? You have, you can capture a global audience in that manner, but of course, mm. it's never going to replace a live event. Absolutely, I agree. I agree. Yeah, yeah. I think what we really miss is, you know, is is the physical, um, like getting hugs from people and yes, things like in that. Yeah, in person, in person connection, looking at someone's facial yeah. expression and, but it, and but body it's, language. Mm. But it's so good that we do have this technology that we can use this like you but going back to what you said about the the physical distancing we you know people have been definitely more social i've connected yes. with so many people that i had um i've actually met some new people and connected with people that i hadn't spoken to for a long time yes. and you know that's it, some of it's you've been like you know having a zoom dinner party or something yes, you know yes, with three yes. couples together where we're on zoom yes. so 
yes. it's it's uh it's been an interesting time um yes. and then of course the the kids though it's it's been challenging definitely for the yes. kids not to yes. be yes. able to play with their friends um yes. especially the younger ones and then my daughter's 17 and she used to go to starbucks after school and they used yes. to hang out there and then there's no more of that. So that was, you know, a, a very challenging at the beginning as that well. That is very challenging. That's true. And thankfully, uh, there are three kids, you know, I have, at home, I have twins that are 12 years old. And my youngest is nine, so kind of similar age group. So at least they, they can have play together. Other, yeah. Yes, they have each other to play with. But I'm thinking of homes where there, there are single kids, you know, they're all by yes. themselves. It must be really hard for them. Yes. You know, and or or our, I have a friend who has a two year old and yes. she's trying to run her business and then she's got her two year old and we've been on some Zooms and, you know, the, her daughter will come. And and uh, so it's yes. hard for the you know, it's hard for for women who are moms trying to run their business. Yeah, they still have the kids at home. Oh, yes, absolutely. I mean, I, even though my kids are nine and 12, I still have that sometimes if, I, yeah. you know, I mean, even when I was doing my Facebook live and then I have my kittens coming in, like banging on the door and, and I, I thought they were my kids doing it. And then, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm putting up the smile and doing my live. But once I'm done, I'm like, what were you doing? I was on my live and I don't want people to hear you knocking at my door. And then they're like, the kittens were doing that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, moms, yeah. we, I mean, as women, we have to go through a lot of all of that, you know, and we yeah, and you, you know, and it's been there's been some stuff like you have to you have to realize that everybody's at home, the whole family's at home, they've got the kids at home, and you've got I've had in one of the interviews I was having a the dog just started barking like crazy. You can't, you know, you can't control it. It's it's the way yeah. it is. It's real life. We're yeah. really yeah. yeah. We're yeah. really showing everybody, like, you really have to accept the fact that this is the way it is and, yeah. and, and be real. Yes. I mean, I called up RBC because, uh, you know, I, I was um, wanted to make a request for deferring my mortgage yeah. payments. And the lady who called up after a few minutes, her baby started wailing, you know. <laughs> And she was so apologetic and she was like, I'm really sorry. I'm working from home. And I said, don't worry about it. I'm a mom too. And, and, you yeah. know, it is, as you said, you know, this is the reality of things. Everybody's at home. Yes. And we, and, and, you know, she's still trying to make things work and, and she's still showing up for her job and, 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 you know, that's great. And we have to just support each other. That's all. Exactly. Exactly. So, um, so back to your, have you completed your online course that you so were going I, I, to? Yes, I have completed the, the written content, okay. but I've not been able to go. I have a coach who's uh, a mentor working with me and I'm supposed to go one day and, uh, you know, shoot all the videos that will go oh, okay. for each month. Right. So that's right. the only thing left because of uh, the pandemic situation. As soon as rules are relaxed, I should be able to do that. There was only one day that I was able to go because there is um, uh, like a channel that is making a documentary film on, uh, you know, on my life as an immigrant woman. And uh, there was only one because they have this, uh, they've been uh, kind of uh, filming me uh, for a while now. Like the last time they filmed me was in December, like when my, okay. my kids and I, we were putting up the Christmas tree. So they wanted to show what, you know, oh, okay. the family was doing together. And then they were supposed to wrap things up by February and, and we would be done filming. But then things got a, a bit delayed and then this happened, the pandemic situation right. and everything has been on hold. And they're like so fed up that we went, I went, you just sent me a car. They like, everything was sanitized and you know, everybody's wearing masks and, and gloves. And then eventually I went um, for the interview. They wanted to interview me. They wanted at least one uh, part of the film done. So I got that done during okay. the pandemic because it was just me and them behind the camera so just three of us and that was manageable right. so we got that done uh, but yes people are figuring out and learning to work around things now 
Uh, yes, yes. You, you uh, can't be on hold forever. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's the thing. They cannot be on hold. Um, as we see things getting opened up and, you know, practicing, you know, the different requirements and regulations and everything like that. But uh, it's really all about getting creative and thinking how you, yeah. we can operate in our businesses going forward because it's going to be like this for a little, you know, a little while yeah. and we don't yeah. really know how long. So yeah. there's... So, yeah. um, I feel that it has been hard for some seniors as well, I and mean, especially seniors yeah. who have no one. So uh, there's, uh, I have a lady who goes to my place of worship. That's where I met her. But she is, she also lives in the neighborhood. She lives in a high rise behind my house. And uh, her husband passed away um, about a year ago. She has no okay. kids. She has no family here. So it's just and, her. Uh, you know, she, yeah, it's just her. She lives by herself in the apartment. She is not willing to go to a home or go to anybody. I mean, I've offered her my home and said, come live with us. But she is not willing to leave because, you know, at that age, when she is in her uh, maybe mid seventies and she has a pacemaker, she has tons of health issues, uh, you know, you name it. And she has it. She is most comfortable in her home that she's yeah. lived in for the last like 40, 50 years. So, you know, at this age to kind of uproot her and bring her to a new environment is not something that will work for her. So no. she prefers at least, you know, everything else is so unpredictable. So she's holding on to what is familiar for her. And, and so what I've done is like I had to go and see her because she has nobody else. And I used to take her around. So for her doctor appointments, for her grocery okay. shopping, all of that. Uh, I just couldn't, uh, you know, I couldn't just leave her alone thinking, you know, we can't, um, you know, we have to maintain safe distance and what if I become ill and all of that. I just couldn't ignore and just leave her alone. And, and she was, she's been miserable. I mean, even though she can't go out much, but then the fear and like, she's been, she's at home. So she's watching the news Every oh, day. that's yeah, and that's the worst thing to be to be consuming the news yeah. because news is is all negative. That's all that they sell. All they the just sell I, negativity. I, yes, yes, and I, I I don't watch the news. So she's been watching that, and she's been living in fear. Like she's very scared uh, of what's going to happen next. And and you know, and and to a point where she's like, if I die, this is my will. Like you know, you have to go there, and that's my will, and this is. You know, all of that, she's, pre she's already preparing for that, you know, thinking that, you know, that she might die because of, of COVID-19 and seniors are impacted by it. They're more vulnerable. That's, that's what she's hearing in the news and all of that. So right. I've, I've, I've had, uh, like, I have been very mindful of what she's going through and I have been going to see her irrespective of like the fact that we were not supposed to go and, you know, no play dates allowed and no no people visiting each other but i have been regularly visiting her i have maintained the discipline of you know okay keeping distance and all of that but then i had to be there for her there was no other way and 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 you know i'm, I'm thinking about that's, other people that's like true her. yes exactly sometimes and exactly that's what uh you have to consider the the mental mental health yeah. of, of the individual as well yeah. And when she's getting consumed with fear, that just um, makes you vibrate at a lower level. And then yeah. it um, uh, affects your immune yeah. system. And Absolutely. it's just worse. Uh, you know, it just, yeah. it, it's going to affect your health yeah. as well. Yes, so. it's, well, it's in your space, you know, and, and fear yeah. is like, if, if, if it's fear based, that you're still attracting that towards you because uh, you're thinking about it day and night. Right. It, right. You know, you're so present to it. And so, you know, it's, it's to comfort her and to keep reassuring her. And, and if I don't go to see her, she feels kind of miserable and she feels she's not loved. And so it's been very difficult to, um, to you know, make sure that she's okay and, and you know, during these right. circumstances and, and things like that because earlier I would take her out, we would go out, you know, for a drive. And sometimes when the kids were in school, we went for lunches. Like I took her out for lunch. All of that is not allowed anymore. So 
exactly. And then I'm, um, you know, and then there's a, a lot of stories like that, I'm sure, of other seniors yes. and, yes. and just other people also who just live alone. Um, yes, it's, it's quite difficult, uh, yes. you know, as yes. well. So. And, then, and then, you know, I've had a friend, uh, they, they have been like a different uh, experiences. I mean, I have a friend who lost her home in a fire uh, before the pandemic, you know, just uh, before, during Christmas. Oh. And, uh, you know, and, and then the, the fire department is doing investigations and, and stuff like that. And, and so until then, she's been homeless. And she's been living out of a car. And then one day she called, and, and she's been miserable and crying. And now that then oh. there's this pandemic, and then she's had to go, she's had to go to the Y to take her showers or, you know, to, you know, because she doesn't know where else to go. So she's finding places where she can go take a oh shower. Or, you know, she can't even invite herself to a friend's place. Because you know we have to maintain. Not social supposed to, right? Yeah. 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 So what, what? What does she do? And and then, you know, she and then she's worried that because she's so much out in the open that she would become. She's sick. more at risk. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. there have been different experiences, and you know, I've been. It's it's. It kind of makes you present to how vulnerable a human being can be, and you know, it humbles us and you know, we, well, I, I feel like, you know, thankful that I, I feel like I, I, I feel thankful that I'm not in that situation and not, you know, it could have been worse and, you know, and then it gives, makes me feel compassionate towards people who are dealing with what they're dealing with and, you know, and, and feel that I want to care for them and do things for them. So exactly. Yes. And it really, really makes you feel grateful for, you know, yeah. grateful yeah. for uh, yeah. the, the fact that you have a home, you, you yeah. have, um, you have food, you have a roof over yeah. your head and, yeah. you know, um, yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah, definitely. A gratitude has been something Absolutely. so important right now um, yeah. as we're dealing through this, uh, yeah. y you know, there's so much to be grateful yeah. for. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. All right. Well, thank you so much, Sharin, for your time. I think we've gone for quite a while. <laughs> uh, yes. So uh, well, it's been a pleasure. It's been a pleasure. It's always lovely to ch uh, to chat with you. Yeah. Well, it's been it's been a great talking to you as yes. well. And um, I look forward to when we can see each other in person again. And yes. I will. Um, do you have? Uh, do you have a website as well? You yes, have a website, I do. Right? I do. Yeah, so I'll yeah. put that up underneath this um, interview when I put it up. Thank you. And Thank you. Um, whatever else you might want to share, Absolutely. I can put underneath as well. So thank you so much for your time. And Thank you. Take care, stay safe, and look forward to when we can go for lunch. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Love you. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye.